chapter 11. That's our reading for this morning. Begin reading with me at verse 14, please. Luke chapter 11, listen to verse 14. The Bible says, And he, that being Jesus, was casting out a demon, and it was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Others, to test him, were demanding of him a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For if you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul, and I, if by Beelzebul cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? So they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And when a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away from him all his armor on which he had relied and distributes its plunder. He who is not with me is against me, and who does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit goes out of a man and it passes through waterless places seeking rest and not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept put in order. Then it goes and takes along seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they go in and live there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. You know, when you read this, the first thing that stands out to me is, is just how far these people were willing to go to deny Jesus as the Messiah come to save them. The illogical argument that they make that Jesus exposes that he in some way was from Satan while all the while exhibiting the power that he had and overpowering Satan just by way of casting out these demons. It's unbelievable that that's where and what they would do. And it's a reminder for us that people who reject Jesus at the heart are, are not honest. We, we, we see in Romans chapter 1 and Romans chapter 2 where God describes those as, as literally pushing down the truth, what they know to be the truth. He talks there about the Gentiles having the ability to reason within themselves just by way of general revelation, just by way of the creation that, that there is a God. But these dishonest men with an agenda manipulate and are willing in the midst of, of obvious evidence that Jesus was who he said he was, the one who came to save them, they deny him. And Jesus here, he, he exposes just how, how silly that is. Verse 20, but if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. The, the, these miracles had implications. They had obvious consequences. If I have the ability to do this, and I'm sitting here and I'm doing this in the midst of you, if I'm overpowering Satan right here in front of you, did you ever think that maybe I'm from God? Maybe I'm the one who came to save you? You know, verse 23, Jesus, he says, he who is not with me is against me. I want you to think about that for a moment. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. I want you to spend some time today with that statement. And here's my takeaway. You know, when it comes to Jesus, you're either with him or you're not. You're either committed to him or you're not. You're either following, following him or you're not. There's no fence sitting with Jesus. So here's what I want us to do. I want us today to examine our lives and ask ourselves, am I all in? Have I given my life to Jesus? Am I truly a disciple of his? Or am I stuck somewhere between two opinions? Am I stuck somewhere between the world and Jesus? Doing some things my way, some things his way, but not totally willing 
to commit. He who is not with me, Jesus says, is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. There's no fence sitting with Jesus. Are you on the fence? That's pretty good. Father in heaven, Father, thank you for another day. Another day in your word, Father. Thank you for this opportunity for us through this event of technology, Father, to study together, to even pray together. Father, we're mindful of those who are less fortunate than us. We're mindful of those whose health is not as they would have it to be. Continue to pray for Betty, for Sandy, Jeanette, for Bill, Donnie. We're thankful that Maine and Darlene's granddaughter, Mila, that her surgery went well. Continue to bless her and, and her recovery, Father. Bless us. Today, Father, with opportunities to, to do good. Father, we ask that you would be with Clarice Young. Father, as she, um, as her surgery was postponed again, Father, we pray that it be your will that that would happen sooner rather than later, that she would be alleviated, Father, of her pain. Father, all of these things in your will, we recognize that your will is perfect. Father, be with us today. Bless us with opportunities to share the good news about your son with others. The Messiah who loved us and cared enough to come to this earth to save us, Father. Without his love, without his mercy, without his sacrifice, we would be lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.